thank you thank you sir thank, <clears throat> thank you i want to thank dr palniraman and uh, <clears throat> puducherry iap team for uh, inviting me to give this talk uh, when palniraman sir called me and said that sir you have to talk about arthritis in children and demystify asked what do you mean by demystify he said whenever a children with arthritis comes to our opd we get uh, nervous tensed so can you able to demystify us so i said definitely so we'll start with uh, a small tirukural uh, tiruvalluvar has written 10 kurals in adhigaram porpal adhigaram marundu what he says is noy nadi noy mudal nadi adu thanikkum vai nadi vaippa chair basically what you are as a physician what you should know is to inquire about the nature of the disease what caused the disease and what's the method of cure and treat it faithfully according to the medical rule so what i want to you know, tell from this study is arthritis is not the diagnosis arthritis is a symptom is like fever so we have to find out what is the cause for arthritis then only we can able to manage that child so in the next 20 minutes what i am going to do is how to approach a child with joint pain and i we will be both audience and me will demystify the arthritis by some clinical scenarios so why it's important to evaluate a joint pain in a child so that's the first question why do you want to worry about the joint pain we all know that several systemic disease presents with the lead pain of joint pain especially leukemias lot of times leukemias presents with fever and arthritis lot of times connective tissue disorders mostly every connective tissue disorder they have a lot of extra articular manifestation also so when a child comes with arthritis you have to look into the other system, other extra articular manifestation especially in lupus dermatomyositis because we are seeing children with dermatomyositis labeled as juvenile idiopathic arthritis because they didn't examine the child with myositis again early recognition is very very important because if you miss septic arthritis it is a medical emergency the child will have a long term sequela of the damaged joint so before going to arthritis we all should be very clear in our mind so three questions you should ask any child comes with joint pain is it arthralgia or arthritis that's the first question you have to ask so we all know that arthralgia means pain in the joints and no signs of inflammation just the child has got pain arthritis the it is means inflammation where you have swelling redness and all those things and always remember arthralgia is not equal to arthritis all the arthritis will have arthralgia but all the arthralgia is not arthritis this is a old what we learnt in our pathology days so whenever when you they say inflammation these are the five devils of inflammation if there is a presence of swelling of the joint then it is definitely arthritis if they have or if they have two of the following like limited range of motion tenderness pain with motion and joint warmth so if this any two of the devils are there you should take it as arthritis second question okay so you know it's now pain is because of arthritis so main thing is where is the pain originating from is it coming from the joint or is a non articular structures there are so many non articular structures which can lead to uh, pain over the joint especially the muscle the bursa the tendon all those things can cause pain so how do you differentiate whether it is articular or non articular so if it is a articular pain there will be swelling definitely there will be joint line tenderness exactly where the joint moves and there is a limitation of motion on both active and passive joint and there may be instability locking crepitus or deformity so this all will be there if you have a articular pain if it is a non articular pain physical findings are remote from the joint capsule this away from the joint focal or point tenderness a particular place only you will have pain pain on passive movement in certain planes whenever suppose if there is a muscle that is injured or strained whenever that particular muscle is moving then you have pain they usually don't have instability crepitus or deformity next question so first question is arthralgia arthritis second question is is it articular pain or non articular pain the third question is whether it is inflammatory or non inflammatory so inflammatory means the patient will have child will have pain warmth erythema swelling and tenderness all the giant, all the signs of inflammation they have something very specific called morning stiffness or jelling they also have systemic features like fever fatigue and weight loss if you do blood test esr crp will be very high and thrombocytosis is one of the marker of inflammation 
if it is a non inflammatory pain pain occurs only after physical activity improves with rest so that is typical of mechanical pain you take rest you get better and worsens as the day progresses it will be more in the evening it's completely opposite to the inflammatory pain which is more in the morning no systemic features otherwise the child will be well and if you do the investigations and your esr crp can be normal so if you look into the cause of joint pain it is huge and you label any system infectious post infectious connective tissue disorders hematological causes which can cause joint pain neoplastic disorders there are group of non inflammatory group of joint pain and miscellaneous group so you label any disease any condition any system involved you can have joint pain as a manifestation so infection causes septic arthritis osteomyelitis viral related arthritis reactive arthritis comes here in rheumatic disease all the rheumatic diseases lupus dermatomyositis scleroderma vasculitis j all cause malignancies two important things are leukemias and neuroblastomas presence with uh, joint pain other other bone tumors like osteoid osteoma also have joint pain some miscellaneous orthopedic conditions these are not pediatric uh, these are all orthopedic conditions like perth is skiffy osteo shoulder all present joint pain non inflammatory joint pain again growing pain we all know very well fibromyalgia chronic fatigue syndrome reflex sympathetic dystrophy and hypermobile joint hematological there is heme arthrosis especially child has got hemophilia it can present with the joint swelling and joint pain other conditions like club club foot congenital hip dysplasia all can present with joint pain in children so how are you going to approach so the list is huge starting from in, starting from infection malignancy hematological condition connective tissue disorders non inflammatory causes so the joint the etiology for joint pain is huge so how do you approach a child with joint pain so first question so we assume it is got arthritis not arthralgia so now you have to ask the question how many days or how many weeks or is it months what is the duration of your symptoms we divide them into acute and chronic based on less than 6 weeks and more than 6 weeks if somebody comes with arthritis of very short duration hours to days one day two days always think of trauma causing hematoma hematosis or coagulopathies which can cause especially hemophilia or septic arthritis if they have fever so if if they come with few hours to days you think of those things if they come from days to weeks infections especially post viral post vaccination also acute traumatic fever connective tissue disorders vasculitis and mechanical pain and systemic ja because we here in we need only two weeks of symptoms to develop diagnose systemic ja if somebody comes weeks to months that means more than 6 weeks of arthritis you think of ja rare miscellaneous disorders and indolent infections like tb especially when they when they present with monoarthritis so covers to days think of septic arthritis very common trauma and coagulopathies days to weeks you think of rheumatological disease and infectious causes and more than 6 weeks you think of rheumatological causes description of the joint involvement so whenever you see a child so what are joints involved yeah, that will give a clue towards your diagnosis whether is axial joints or peripheral joints we all know axial joints means spine sacroiliac sternocleidomastoid sternum, and malgrim sternae peripheral joints all the other joints large and small joints are involved numbers is arbitrary number like oligoarticular polyarticular that also give a clue we'll go into that in detail so which joint particularly we can have some idea suppose the distal interphalangeal joints are involved it is happens in psoriatic arthritis sometimes children may develop psoriatic skin lesions very later temporomandibular joints are involved in rheumatoid factor negative juvenile idiopathic arthritis the lower limb joints are usually involved in reactive arthritis and how does the joint pains come we all know that in acute rheumatic fever the joint pain is usually migratory joint pain reactive arthritis is additive additive means that one by one gets added but the other one does not go away so that's keep on suppose you start with both the knees then it goes to both the ankles and both the rest it keeps on additive intermittent means they have particular time all the joints will they have pain at the same time and they get better once you start treatment another very specific thing in juvenile idiopathic arthritis something called enthesitis related arthritis what is enthesis means inflammation at the tendons ligaments or fascia or joint capsule to the bone the attachment here you can see this patient has got right tendoachilles enthesitis 
So if that is there with arthritis and it is more than six weeks, you should suspect juvenile idiopathic arthritis, ERA type. Very important thing, whenever the patient comes with the joint pain and arthritis, you have to look into the extra-articular manifestations of the other diseases, which will give a very, very important clue. If some the same child has got fever, especially adolescent fever, weight loss, rash, oral ulcers, is straightforward yesterday. If the child has got muscle weakness, heliotrope rash, it is dermatomyositis. If they have rash, abdominal pain, or hematuria, it's HSP, enoxone purpura, we all know that the classical rash. Diarrhea, dysentery with arthritis, think of inflammatory bowel disease. If they have uveitis, you have to think of JA, depending on what type of uveitis, whether it's anti-uveitis or post-uveitis, uh, JA, Bechet's and sarcoidosis. If they have urethritis, post-reactive arthritis, weight loss and night pain, specifically arthritis presenting with weight loss, night pain, severe bone pain, the child is screaming with arthritis, with pain, you should think of malignancy. So this is always a confusion between the systemic arthritis and leukemias. Both of them present with the fever, some form of rash and excruciating arthritis. So what, how do you differentiate? So systemic arthritis is very usually less painful and we already told any rheumatological condition will have morning pain. But here in leukemia, severe bone pain because of the bleed below the periosteum. So they'll have significant amount of pain and more in the night. Systemic rash, very classically rash comes along with the fever and the fe rash goes away when the fever goes away. Leukemia, the rash is usually due to low platelets. That's your petechia and purpura speak. Fever will be very high spiking. Leukemia, high spiking to low grade. And the child will be well in between the sp uh, spikes of fever. That is your classical systemic JA. WBC is high and platelets will be very high in systemic JA. Leukemia, if you may be able to see the blast. Platelets may be normal or low. It will never will be very high in leukemias. Okay, so now we know whatever I told you so far. So we know whenever the first thing the child comes with joint pain, first question is it arthralgia or arthritis? Second question is, is it coming from the joint or the surrounding tissue? The third question is whether it is inflammatory or non-inflammatory? Then you ask the history about other systemic involvement with fever, without fever, history of trauma, history of coagulopathy, all those things we have to see. I am going to take you through three case scenarios. Uh, so first is a three years old child who has come with irritability and refusal to move his left leg for three days. You can see this left leg, she is kept in the externally rotated thing, no history of trauma, but on examination, the child was febrile, 103. She was very painful, apprehensive, lying with the left leg held flex and externally rotated. She has got, has got pain and decreased range of movement of the left hip, but the left knee examination is normal. So this is what the issue the history. So differential diagnosis you should consider because it's acute history for only for three days and with very high grade fever. First thing of septic arthritis, that should be your first diagnosis. Then you can consider transient synovitis or reactive arthritis or malignancy also should be considered because of excruciating pain. But history, again, go through the history, whether it is only in the morning or in the night, you have to ask that history. Sinal fluid analysis in the children with arthritis does not give a major thing. It does not very much uh, differentiate sepsis or inflammatory because if you look here, the WBC count in sepsis and the inflammatory is slightly high on the sepsis and the polymorpho. That's all you can say. But it is so we have to go into all the details. Uh, clinical history is very, very important to rule out septic arthritis. Only the uh, sinal fluid analysis will not give a much clue. All the others will not make a big change. So septic arthritis, we still follow the something called Kosher's criteria. The anybody who has got very high grade fever, inability to bear weight, high ESR and white cell count more than 12,000. So it's a well, it's a well known, well <coughs> sensitivity, specificity criteria is very good. If all the four things are there, 99% you are dealing with the child with septic arthritis, especially the acute history of fever and inability to bear weight. If the three things are there, 93% you are, probability of septic arthritis is 93%. So there is a condition called transient synovitis. Uh, remember that, uh, don't miss a septic arthritis because transient synovitis is a benign, self-limited etiology, we don't know, is often they have some URI, it's a brief period of sterile inflammation. Of, they can have joint effusion also. It's common in boys, especially three to eight years. So less than three years or little older children don't diagnose transient synovitis. Presence of sudden onset of painful limp, they may be having low-grade fever, 
child otherwise appears well they may walk with the limp diagnosed by the the kindly excludes septic arthritis wbc count will be normal esrc may, may be mildly elevated ultrasound may show a small effusion self limiting disease we usually gives little bit of naproxen or paracetamol for the uh, child to get better joint aspiration whenever you think of septic arthritis kindly do joint aspiration to rule out septic arthritis because we cannot miss a septic arthritis okay. prognosis is usually good so another important thing in our general pediatric practice is uh, somebody comes with acute arthritis and aso has come as high so there is a two conditions called post streptococcal reactive arthritis and acute rheumatic fever so here very important thing is the presentation of the joint pain so in in psra post streptococcal it's additive and persistent they will not and large and small joints get involved in acute rheumatic fever it is usually migratory the classical large joint so here small joints are involved there won't be good response to your aspirin or nsaids that's very very important remaining things and all same esr crp will be very high poor to moderate response i already told you genetic predisposition is that they also can have some amount of carditis psra also can have some amount of carditis antibiotic prophylaxis like penicillin is given for almost a year and here in acute rheumatic fever we all know that how long to give secondary prophylaxis so the another one pediatricians are well versed is our growing pain i don't need to tell about growing pain to all of you it is very classical well child they have pain in the evening especially in the pretibial region cough and thigh morning there will be no pain they'll be running around will be worse on more active days there may be a family history physical examination will be usually normal and you can give some paracetamol at night especially the days which they are very active hypermobile joint syndrome is another one where you can have the children you can see this all the double jointed children so girls are more common to have hypermobile joints so before you make as benign make sure that you don't you rule out eglet danlas marfan's homocystinuria mm -hmm. down syndrome and william syndrome we have something called byten score to do that the byten score is like 9 points if you have 6 out of if you have 6 out of definite hypermobility is there so this is your byten score the sound cut in there ke adu enna and it is just sitting in the door is talking the birds the birds are outside sir <laughs> sure so case scenario 2 is a 3 years old female is again swollen painful joint for 3 months no history of fever or preceding trauma she continues to walk but her parents notice that is slightly less and especially in the morning the children will never say the child will have uh, uh, will have early morning stiffness but the thing is if the parents may notice the child will prefer to lie down for a long time and they are usually a febrile on examination the child has got a right knee effusion with the limited range of motion and uh, on examination there is a slightly warm knee but there is no erythema which you usually see in a child with septic arthritis she can walk and run but she has got a right sided limb so diagnosis is juvenile idiopathic arthritis because of long duration more than 6 weeks there is some stiffness in the morning there is mild warm but still the child is able to walk and run so <clears throat> when you will diagnose ja onset less than 16 years arthritis is in one joint and it is a duration of arthritis more than 6 weeks and we have seven different types is usually very easy to remember if you see this picture oligoarticular means young girl only asymmetrical large joints they have asymptomatic uveitis rheumatoid factor positive and negative polyarticular ja they have usually girls large and small joints symmetrical involvement systemic arthritis they have rash cirrhosis they have very high grade fever along the rash comes along with the fever and in enthesitis lateral arthritis they have usually boys they have sacroiliac joint involvement they have enthesitis they have acute symptomatic uveitis so what are common myths in ja inflammatory disease is rare in children is not true we see especially in our unit in the last 10 years we have almost 900 children with juvenile idiopathic arthritis there it is a one which we have to diagnose to consider and diagnose and the children with musculoskeletal disease always presents with joint pain especially small children they don't present with joint pain they present with difficulty in walking stiffness in the morning and the investigation need to be abnormal to diagnose ja is always only esr crp will be high we have to rule out other causes that's a very very important thing the last case scenario is a 10 years old boy one year history of left sided limb 
pain involving the left thigh and knee he denies fever preceding illness or any trauma is one year history of left side pain a febrile obese walks with a painful limp he has got pain on stress and decrease in rotation abduction of the left hip there is a movement also restricted knee is normal so we should consider because this child does not have any signs of inflammation and the long standing we should consider this two diagnoses slipped capital femoral epiphysis and perthes disease so if a hip joint pain x ray is mandatory so this both are orthopedic conditions usually it happens in boys 10 to 14 years this skiffy can have associated with other endocrine problems also so if you take a x ray you can see here something called klein line normally in a people you should be able to the head of the femur should be little outside but here in skiffy the head of the femur will be down is orthopedic condition you have to refer to orthopedics orthopedicians will do is fixation with the screw perthes disease is nothing but the avascular necrosis of the capital femoral epiphysis you should think of trauma sometimes steroids the one which we patients have sometimes it can be idiopathic also so uh, mri will pick up very early if the x ray is normal we may have to go to mri for hip joint pain because hip joint you know, x ray will take long time to come so here you can see this is a child with typical with avascular necrosis of the thing so treatment again is uh, was conservative management or they do osteotomy of the proximal femur so last few minutes i am going to talk to about something called pediatric gals that's a pediatric gait arm and leg examination simple form of screening for musculoskeletal examination it is well sensitivity and specificity three questions you should ask as a screening do you have any pain or stiffness in your joints muscles or back do you have any difficulty in getting yourself dressed without any help difficulty in going upstairs so these are three questions you should ask screening then there is even app is there it is freely downloadable we just put p girls you'll get the app you just say yes no yes no yes no it will give you whether what's a problem so you is a screening manual so observe the child from back as the patient to walk with the tiptoe walking and by the front and look into the hold the hand straight in front of you make a fist touch the pinch of uh, pinch your index finger with your thumb together it will help you to assess the joint movements of the hand and you also have to look at the tips of the fingers squeeze the metacarpals to look for any pain ask them to prayer sign inverted prayer sign this is to hold the hands up and this is to hold the hands at the back this is to see the neck movements and also temporary this is the neck movements you touch try to try and touch the shoulder with your ear this is for your temporomandibular joint this is for your spine In the lower limb feel the effusion of the knee and active movement of the knees and passive movement of the hip joints if you do this manner it takes only 2 minutes and if you finally you plot it so it will tell you which joint is a problem based on that then we have to do pediatric regional musculoskeletal examination that's your inspection palpation percussion so you have to do in all the joints to find out so investigations based on your clinical diagnosis investigation is not going to give you the diagnosis investigation based on your clinical diagnosis we have to do the test basic investigation cbc differential count blood smear esr crp and x rays but all the other investigation is based on your clinical uh, diagnosis okay to summarize you have to find the nature of pain presence of limb weight bearing status morning stiffness and systemic symptoms positive family history that will give a clue towards bleeding disorder sickle cell anemia inflammatory bowel disease psoriasis physical examination arthralgia arthritis is it coming from joints or from outside and the last thing is were inflammatory or non inflammatory so when do you refer to a pediatric rheumatologist when do you have to refer the child the child is suspected inflammatory joint disease so whenever you think of that at least send it to them once to rule out other causes the child is suspected multi system disease especially lupus and vasculitis unexplained musculoskeletal symptoms idiopathic pain syndromes you have to refer to them and last one is if you think the child has got associated other autoimmune disorders like ibd reactive arthritis hsp down syndrome or immunodeficiency states also so how do you refer to us so we have clinics on wednesday friday and saturday you just give me a call and send the patient i will see we'll make the final diagnosis and plan and we'll send it back to you with this i will stop it here and we are happy to take any questions hope i am able to demystify the arthritis for you all thank you